Good evening everyone and we are going to start our first training video. Excuse the fun music in the background, we wanted to add a little ambiance, but let's get started. Once you go to OltPro.com, as you see, O-L-T-Pro-P-R-O.com, and you put in your username, password, firm name, taxology, tax services, and below you'll see a code, usually with numbers and letters that you put in. You'll log in, and you will get to this screen. As you see, yes, we are in 2015. And it is the tax year of 2014. We are going to now go over how to put in a return. I know sometimes it can be confusing because there are two methods of entry. There's direct entry mode. Typically you want to use this once you're a little bit more familiar with the different schedules comprised in the tax return. Or for some of the beginners and even seasoned pros, we will do interview mode. For the training purposes, I will only do returns in interview mode. I like this method because it tends to allow the preparers to not only be prompted for questions, but as you're going along, it's a great learning tool. So let's get started. At the top of our toolbar here, depending on your administrative abilities, you may have more or less here, okay? But this is your toolbar. So let's go to Client Manager. We're gonna start a new return. and enter in the social security number of our client. Okay, and of course we're going to re-enter. want to confirm that we have the correct number. And save and continue. As you see, as it's processing, you're going to come to this fun screen. Might look a little intimidating at first, but it's simply data entry. Let's get started. This is Mr. Joe Barnes. I'm going to go back. I tend to like things cast, but it is up to you. It's not mandatory. Let's see, it's the new year, so let's make him January. We'll keep them somewhere in the 30s. Let's see. We're going to say that Joe is in sales. Joe, for this purpose in this exercise, does not have an identity theft pin. However, if you have a client who is experienced in or has experienced identity theft in the past, make sure that they give you a pin. You would enter it here without it the return will not be able to be submitted and it will reject back. Again, you want to ask any of these questions. Is the primary taxpayer disabled, blind, hopefully not deceased, student, if so, you will allot the month, okay? A surviving spouse, are they in the U.S. Armed Forces? Or could they possibly be a qualifying child of another person for EIC, especially with students, okay? Now, New for this year, you will definitely, definitely always want to ask if they have the minimum essential coverage for all 12 months. Okay? For more information, please click the link here. You're also going to ask, did the primary taxpayer have insurance purchased through the marketplace? For as many clients who did purchase insurance through the marketplace, there are just as many who got qualified health insurance on their own. So for this purposes, we're going to say that Joe has his own insurance. So did he have the minimum essential coverage for all 12 months? I'm going to say yes. Did he purchase it through the marketplace? No. And that's okay. Joe is single. He is going to live at 123 Apple Lane. I love Atlanta, so he's going to live in Atlanta, Georgia. And as you see so far, it's just data entry. Make sure to ask for names, of course, <laughs> telephone numbers, and email address. 
The email address and telephone numbers are not only for the purposes of the software, but you also want to keep up with your clients for next year. Okay, make sure you enter in two phone numbers. Now, a good question to ask is what if my client doesn't have two telephone numbers? A lot of us only have cell phones. That is okay. As long as you get the initial primary one, for more than welcome to do the second one and essentially type in the same telephone number and just change the last digit. We must have two numbers for banking purposes. Joe is from Georgia. And you know what? Joe wants a check. He decided not to have his return put in his banking account, so I'm going to save and continue. However, if Joe did want to have a direct deposit, you can definitely enter in this information here. Select if it's a checking or savings and make sure he has the routing and account number correct. Again, if you have a client who is using a prepaid card, such as NetSpin or a Rush card, make sure and emphasize to make sure that they are giving you indeed the routing and the account number, not to be confused with the 16 digits on the front of the card. If they insist that that is it, disclose to them that you are not liable for any mix-ups if they are not giving you the correct information. So let's save and continue. Processing times will vary depending on your internet coverage. And again, you'll see that we're on the same screen. But don't panic. I want you to scroll up and click complete. Now, you'll see this fun little box pop up. Now, are we ready to mark this return as completed? No. Are we ready to mark the return as reviewed? No. Are we filing this return paper or electronic? We are filing it electronically, but right now we want to save and redirect to managing our returns so that we can go into interview mode. So click here. And as you see, we'll return to manage returns. Get very familiar with this screen because you will see it a lot. Again, you'll notice here, you can edit the return, view and print the return, or save it to a PDF. View the input that you have. Just in case there's some discrepancies, you can click here and see where you went wrong. Okay? Label to print, letters, templates for your clients. Appointments if you decide to keep appointments here or you can keep them in your phone. But again, for the purposes of this training exercise, I just want to make sure that you all know how to start the return. So, now that we have them loaded here, his personal details, his address, income summary, not there yet, but it's coming, we're going to go in and edit. Now, here you'll see a box talking about direct and interview input messaging. So, save and continue. And again, if you have a client in front of you, in front of you at the moment, this is a great time to fill some of the silent gaps with just small talk. As corny as it may be, the weather, what they have on, what are they doing today, believe me, the time will pass. And if it doesn't, like it's doing now, you guys can laugh about it. Now, as we come to the next screen, again, we're going to go to interview input. Once you do that, you want to save and continue. And voila, we are back to the client information screen where you can confirm your client's information. As you see, and we scroll down. Once we confirm that's all correct, we will save and continue. 
and you are now ready to go into the return. From here, just make sure you're reading all the screens and make sure you're doing your data entry and intake and client interview properly throughout the return.